How are you doing today, folks? Uh, today I'm going to be installing an air conditioner in my office, and I picked up this air conditioner uh, probably a good couple months ago. I was at BJ's and I saw it, and uh, I've been waiting for the warm weather to come to install it. And uh, today it's about 86 degrees outside. The humidity is ridiculously high, and uh, just sitting in my office, I am just uh, the sweat is pouring off of me. So I figure today is the day. Uh, I, th I figure there might be some people out there that are new to, to air conditioners and installing air conditioners. Maybe it's your first apartment, maybe it's your first home. So I want to just kind of show you folks how to install an air conditioner. And there's just a few notes I want to talk to you about air conditioners. Uh, the first thing is, is when you're buying an air conditioner, measure the size of the room that you're using it in and get the right sized air conditioner. I know it sounds silly. Um, but a lot of people go out and buy a huge air conditioner thinking that they're going to do a better job or whatnot. But it doesn't work as efficiently if you get a giant air conditioner uh, and put it in too small a room. Whatever makes the air cooler is either on or off. There's a fan that blows and then this thing that makes the air, the compressor, is on or off. And when it's on, it's making it cooler. And when it's off, it's not. So if you get one that's too big, the, the compressor, you know, it's going to make that cool air less time and come on and off more often. Whereas if you get a right sized air conditioner, it'll just stay on a little bit longer and still cool just as efficiently. The other thing to consider is air conditioners are space coolers. Uh, with wood stoves, they refer to wood stoves as being space heaters. Air conditioners are only going to cool the immediate room. You're going to get very little coolness going through the doorway. Air conditioners use a lot of power to run. So when you're installing your air conditioner, you want to, in a perfect world, you're going to have a dedicated circuit just for your air conditioner. Uh, if you don't have a dedicated circuit for your air conditioner, and maybe you plug a blow dryer in, or you plug the vacuum in while the air conditioner is going, you're most likely going to pop the fuse. You're pretty much guaranteed going to pop the fuse with a blow dryer or, uh, or a vacuum cleaner. So if you own the house and you see the air conditioner as being something that's gonna be there for a while, uh, have an electrician come and run another wire and get a plug just for your air conditioner. In my office uh, where we are, I did have an electrician install a separate plug for a heater in the winter, a space heater. So we're just gonna use that same plug for the air conditioner as well. The final thing you should know before you go out and buy an air conditioner is, you know, just get a tape measure and measure the, the width and the height of your window and make sure the air conditioner fits in the window because uh, nothing's more frustrating than, than getting one that doesn't fit. You know, I hear people spending like a lot of good money, like over $6,000 to have a whole house air conditioner installed. And then once you have the whole house air conditioner installed, you have to have a guy come back in and tune up the system yearly, and I think that's like around 200 bucks. Well, this air conditioner itself was under 200, so assuming I have four air conditioners in the house, assuming they all last more than a year, I could just rotate them and still be way ahead of the game as far as uh, air conditioners go. So I, I don't know, I mean, I, I guess maybe if I made more money, I'd think about installing central air in the house. Maybe the problem isn't with, um, putting central in, air in, maybe I just need to make more money. But, uh, you know, I, I just, simpler is better. In my book, simpler is always better. And I like the simplicity of the air conditioner. If, if it doesn't work, I don't think you're going to take it to a place to get it fixed, but most air conditioners can be replaced pretty reasonably if there's a problem with it. I do end up pulling the air conditioners from the window every, uh, every fall, and, um, you know, I will say one reason to get central air is because as I'm getting older and um, I'm not in as good a shape as I was when I was younger, uh, these, these suckers can get heavy, you know, uh, pulling them out of the window. So I would definitely say get a friend to help you uh, or just be real careful pulling them out. What I did last year is I, I got a couple sawhorses and I actually put my air conditioners on top of sawhorses because that way I don't have to bend over. It's really not good to be bending over and picking stuff up. So that way I don't have to bend over when I, um, when I install my air conditioners. If you take a look at the box here, you can see it's got a little chart which tells you the room size and what size air conditioner you would need. So my room is actually a touch bigger than 260 square feet, but we're gonna be perfectly fine with this size air conditioner. And I'm sure a little bit of, of cold air will leak out and cool off the room, the next room over. Uh, they talk about measuring the height and the width of your window 
And this air conditioner is designed for windows uh, with a 13 inch minimum height and a 36 inch maximum width. My window is a touch more than 36 inches. So we're gonna end up uh, having to rig something up to get this to fit. Take a look at this info on the side of your box when you're, when you're buying your air conditioner and, and be prepared. Oh, and here it even talks about, it's 15 amps and it draws 4.9 amps. So that's really not, uh, that's not really not that bad of a, of a draw for the air conditioner. The way most air conditioners are installed is you go ahead and put it inside the window and you're gonna rest it on the, uh, the window sill here. If for some reason you're, there's not enough of a ledge, there's usually a lip on them to have it rest on, you may need to put a board on the window sill just to raise it up a little bit. Once you've got it resting on the window sill, you're gonna close the window on it and they're usually gonna give you a small little L-shaped bracket up here with some screws and those screws, you just, you just screw those down to lock the window so it doesn't open and, and the air conditioner falls out. Once you've got it locked down here, there's usually some things on the side of the air conditioner that you just slide out and they're gonna screw into the window. They'll give you some insulation to stuff, you know, up in the window here to keep the cold air in and the bugs out as well. I'm just gonna take a few minutes and read the directions. Can't hurt, right? The first thing they want me to do is install this little panel on the side of the air conditioner. And it opens like an accordion. This is what's gonna keep you know, the bugs out and close the rest of the window. I notice on this panel that it's got a little hole in the bottom here. You see there's a little hole for a screw in the bottom and a screw in the top. So this is the side I'm gonna to face towards the inside because I'm assuming that's what we're gonna screw it to once the air conditioner is installed. And then there's four screws that go on the unit to put this panel on. My other air conditioners come with this panel already attached, or at least I thought they did. So, let's see if we can get these guys in. This would be a good time for a magnetic screwdriver. Okay, and I've already done the other side. Next, they've got this piece of foam that I'm supposed to stick to the bottom of the window. Now, this piece is only 36 inches wide and my window is too big and we're just gonna have to deal with that later. But what I'm gonna do is, I'll just clean off the bottom of the window so we get good adhesion. Look at all that dirt. And stick that on. It's only about five o'clock in the afternoon and it's getting cloudy and it's really humid. I think there's gonna be some crazy thunderstorms coming through soon. Hopefully we can finish the video before the power gets knocked out. You hear that? That's thunder. We're gonna let that dry off a little bit before we put the tape on. I opened the window because I wanna test to make sure that the air conditioner is not gonna bump the storm window frame when I put it in. So we're just gonna do a, a quick test fit. And that would be the reason you would need a piece of wood on your windowsill is if your storm window frame is higher, 
and your air conditioner ends up tilting towards the house. So let's just check this out. Okay, it's starting to rain. The, the directions say that there should be a three quarter inch clearance from the window sill to the frame on the storm window because you want to have your air conditioner pitched down a bit so it drains that way, any water inside of it. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get a piece of wood mounted here. This may well be the most important part of the movie. The directions say that you want your window sill to be three quarters of an inch higher than your storm window. So the way we're going to check the height of our window sill is we're going to put our level across from the window sill to the storm window. Now take a look at the bubble on the level. The bubble on the level is always going to go to the higher side. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift the level until the bubble is level. You see how level that is? The bubble is centered between the two lines. It's not level unless the bubble is centered between the two lines. And then what we can do is we can measure the gap between the window sill and the level and that's going to tell us the difference in the height from the storm window to the window sill. Now this looks to me like it's about three-eighths of an inch. All we need to do is take the three-eighths of an inch difference plus the three-quarters of an inch they want us to have for the window sill above the storm window and that tells us we're going to want a one and one-quarter inch board on top of this window sill to get the proper lean. Now if I were to go to Home Depot or Lowe's I could probably get what's known as a five-quarter board which I believe five quarters is an inch and a quarter so I would be an eighth of an inch too high and maybe that's what I should do. Uh, the only thing I have home is a three-quarter inch piece of plywood and that might not be enough. So maybe that's what I'll do is I'll go to Home Depot, I'll get a piece of five-quarter wood which is an inch and a quarter and then I'll cut it to the length of my windowsill and I'm going to only cut it I'm only going to cut it about two inches wide because I want to have room so when I close these shutters, when I take the air conditioner out in the winter, there's still room for them to close. Well guys, things didn't go quite as well as planned last night. Uh, I did make it to Home Depot. I did purchase a piece of wood, but uh, by the time I got back with the wood and then I had a couple errands to do besides that, uh, it was a little bit too late to finish. So we're back again today and we're ready to go. Uh, I did end up going to Home Depot and I got a piece of this. Uh, this is called Five Quarter. Uh, I believe it's pine. And um, the guy at Home Depot was nice enough you know, the board was like this wide and the guy at Home Depot was nice enough to put this on something and run it through a saw, so he ripped it to two inches wide and all I had to do was go ahead and cut the, uh, cut the tip to the right length and then I just rounded off the edges a bit so I don't, uh, I don't get any splinters. We're ready to go ahead and put our board on the window sill and uh, I'm just going to take a quick look at the board and see if I can find the best look inside and have it facing up. And then we're going to put that in the window. When we screw this board down, I want to make sure that the window can still close with the board there. I know some people might take the board out every year. I'm not sure if I will or not. So uh, I'm going to make sure I'm back a little bit from the lip so the window can close. I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill the board and the window sill so I don't end up splitting it. And the rule of thumb, if you're going to pre-drill, you want your drill bit to be 
the same diameter as the non-threaded part of the screw. That is the right size if you're going to pre-drill. Sometimes I go one size smaller because I'm just funny that way. But um, that's a good rule of thumb. So we're going to go ahead and drill uh, three holes on this piece of wood. Before we go any farther, I just want to mention that I'm going to kind of uh, deviate away from the directions here. The directions want me to install a second piece of wood on the windowsill inside the window. Put these little L brackets in, basically to, uh, to catch the bottom of the air conditioner so it doesn't slide out. Um, this is the first time I've seen these brackets. Maybe this is an issue somewhere. Um, but for my situation, I'm, I'm not going to worry about them. I'm three feet off the ground, there's no way this is going to fall on somebody. If it does fall out, shame on me, but uh, nobody's going to get hurt. What I did is I went ahead and I marked the center point on the window, and I marked the center point on the air conditioner. We're going to go ahead and pick up the air conditioner, place it in the window, and then very carefully uh, bring the window down. This is something that you may want to have a helper. One of you just worries about moving the air conditioner, the other one closes the window. And if you live in an older home, or if you live in a home where the windows don't work very well, like my windows here, uh, I've actually got to put a prop in the window to hold it open. So just be very careful when you're moving the prop. You know, these old windows, these old windows are heavy, and uh, it would not be nice to have that fall on my fingers. So just be careful, folks. I love how light this air conditioner is, because it's a smaller size. So I'm going to put the air conditioner in. So the lip of these things on the side is behind the piece of wood I just put in. I'm going to lift the window a little bit. Take out my prop. And then I'm just going to line up my two lines that I had for the center points. and make sure the window is shut all the way. Now that we got the air conditioner in the window, the first thing I'm gonna do is install this little L bracket up in the window. And this L bracket is what's gonna keep the window from opening. I got a smaller bit and I'm gonna pre-drill this just so I don't screw up the window. For these screws, I prefer to use a screwdriver so I don't over tighten and strip out the spot. If you ever do accidentally strip out the spot, just go ahead and put some glue on some toothpicks, shove them in the hole, and then get a, uh, a razor blade and just cut them off. And then you can either re-drill the hole or just put the screw right back in there. They want us to put a bracket on the right side here. So we're supposed to remove this screw. Wow, which is pretty tight. Thanks for the help, Theo. And then we put this bracket on. Reattach it. In all the air conditioners I've ever installed, I've never seen this screw here, and I've never heard talk of putting a second piece of wood inside the channel here and putting brackets to hold the air conditioner back. Before I get any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and close the storm window and, and rest it on the air conditioner 
so we keep as much of the elements out as we can. Now we're going to go ahead and extend the side panels over here, which are going to keep the bugs out. Now my window, as I mentioned, is, is too big for this air conditioner. So I'm going to, I have a solution which is going to fill the holes on the sides. And I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill these holes again so I don't uh, mess up the window. But with delicate plastic parts, it's always better to put them in by hand. I've got a little bit of space there, but if your window was smaller than 36 inches, these would go all the way over and this little piece of plastic would actually go into the side here, making a nice tight seal. Just so you know, folks, I lost a couple of the screws. The little screws fell while I was installing the air conditioner. So I went to my garage and this is what's known as a pan head sheet metal screw. So if you need a screw because you ran out, just go to your Home Depot or your Lowe's or your local hardware store and ask them for a pan head sheet metal screw or best case, just bring the screw you need with you and they'll get you one. And it happens sometimes, folks. There's no way around it. I've got about a two inch gap at the end here because my window is wider than 36 inches. So I suppose I could cut a piece of wood to put in there, uh, get some kind of plastic to put in there, something to fill the gap. When I was at Home Depot yesterday though, I went to the, um, the weather stripping aisle and they sell this thing called air conditioner side insulation panels. And what it is is this little piece of uh, foam and you can just cut it to the size you need. It's got a sticky back here and you can just cut it to the size you need to fill to fill that gap over there. So I measured, so I need it to be 15 inches. So what you can do is you can actually just take this, I'll take this piece off, I'll cut it to the right height, put the insulation back on, and then I can go ahead and uh, just stuff it in there. I'm not gonna worry about the two-sided tape Now what we're going to do is take the piece of foam that they gave us and stuff it between the two windows up top here to keep bugs out and to keep the cold air in. If for some reason the piece of foam they gave you isn't the right size, go to your Home Depot or your Lowe's, go to the insulation aisle, and I know they sell different sizes. They make blocks like two by two inches if you need a little bit more insulation. Let's see if she works. Well, folks, it's official. We got the air conditioner installed. She's running and I've got a nice cool breeze uh, on my back here. I've had it running for about 10 minutes now and the office just feels so much cooler and less humid. This air conditioner comes with a remote and I'm not even gonna bother taking it out of the bag. You know, I really wish the manufacturers would just uh, 
Just make the air conditioners without the remote and knock the price lower by 15 or 20 bucks. You can control all the functions of this air conditioner just using the buttons. A couple things to note before I go is there is a drain in the back of this unit. So there, I read the directions and it says there's a drain plug. Make sure your drain plug allows water to escape the air conditioner. Uh, that's very important. And the most important thing when installing an air conditioner is make sure it tilts slightly backwards so all the water runs the back of the air conditioner and doesn't come in the house. That was the whole reason we installed that board on the windowsill. I hope this video helped you folks out. Good luck with your air conditioner installation and have yourselves a wonderful day.